Hi, Elaine here from Marker Geek. Um, today, I thought I would show you some of my favourite approaches for colouring gnome beards. There are so many gnome stamps out there at the moment, and they're really popular, um, which I can completely understand because they are really fun and cute. Stamping Bella um, have quite a few, so I thought I would share a few of my favourite techniques using one of the Stamping Bella sets. The Stamping Bella gnomes have these really cute, rounded, bushy looking beards and they can be really fun to add some texture to and play with different approaches to achieving that textured look. This first one that I'm colouring, I used kind of a smooshy, dabby approach to building up the texture. Um, I find that this is probably the easiest and least intimidating approach simply because you're not trying to create defined sort of hair strokes um, and you can build up a soft kind of plushy looking texture. This is also an approach I really like to use when colouring the stuffies range from Stamping Bella or any sort of cuddly toy images um, or even cute sort of animal images in, in general. Um, basically, as you can see, I use... Um, dots and squiggles and kind of a dabby motion to create varying sizes of um, rough marks on the paper um, and I work from my darkest shade or a darker shade I may come back in later with a slightly darker one just to pick out certain areas but I start out with one of my darker shades and work through towards my lightest shade building up some form in that beard and um, creating some shadow areas and giving it that kind of puffy look. Um, basically, I start out by creating kind of small dots and marks and squiggles, leaving uh, plenty of white space between them to start with, because with each layer, you're filling in more of the white space and you want to create some soft texture. And the way to achieve that is by layering. So if you fill in too much of the white space to start with, then you won't really have anywhere to go, any way to create sort of interesting variations. As you work through the layers, the lighter shades will soften the darker ones. Um, so working backwards and forwards will help you to kind of, you can keep picking out and defining certain parts and softening so that you don't create too many harsh lines. Don't um, try and be too uniform with the marks that you create and with the positioning of them. You want to create a natural sort of varied look um, and if the size and shape of the marks that you make on the paper are all the same it's going to look a little bit strange. So you want to create um, varied uh, sizes and shapes to give that natural kind of soft look. Uh, and also by placing some darker marks in the lighter areas sparsely, that will help to um, keep that sort of natural look and keep it from looking like you've, you've just moved through bands of colour. And basically, just don't overthink it. Um, as soon as you start to overthink with any of these approaches, um, that's when you're going to end up creating something that looks a little bit forced and strange. Moving on to the second approach. Um, this is a fun one to do, but it is maybe a little bit more intimidating. Um, it doesn't need to be, but um, you probably do need to think a little bit more before you start about where you're going to place things. And it might take you a little bit longer to get into the swing of it and sort of um, become confident in how you're going to place things and, and where you're going to put your marks on the paper. As you can see, essentially what I'm doing is creating um, little upside down V shapes and then kind of filling them in a little bit. So I've started with what will be my second darkest um, shade of grey 
I do this because if I start with my darkest, um, things can get a little bit too dark. Um, I, I might overuse the dark colour um, and I don't want to put too much of that down. Uh, so I kind of map things out um, with the C3 because it's not too dark and it's also not too light so I can see it and I'm building the basis um, for my beard look. Uh, what we're creating here is really kind of the appearance of a big bushy beard with, with little partings in it. Um, again, you don't want to be too uniform with what you're doing. Um, so try and vary the starting point of those upside down V-shapes. Uh, you don't want them all starting in one line going along and then another line underneath. Kind of mix them up slightly. Um, and don't try to create them too close together because we're basically creating some parting areas and then we're going to build soft texture in between with the lighter shades. Um, follow the shape of the beard. So you could see that I started from underneath his nose, put in some lines there and use those as kind of a guide for placing those upside down Vs to start with. And then I come back in with a C4, which is going to be my darkest color and really pick out the shadow under the nose and then pick out where I'm going to have some of the deeper shadows within the beard. Um, varying how much I use in each section and kind of creating some little flicks um, and, and some variation in the lengths of the lines and the thickness of the lines. One tip here, if you're not confident um, in creating fine strokes with your marker is to practice and probably to do that on some scrap paper rather than on an image where you can just sit and practice your marker control um, because without that you will find it difficult to create the fine um, marker flicks that really make building up hair texture um, easier because the thicker your lines, the kind of weirder it's going to look, especially in a smaller area, which is what we're often working with, with stamped images. As you can see, I go back to my C3 and just build in some more flicks. And with the flicks, you really want to be light handed with your marker so that it's barely touching the paper at some points. That's how you're going to create those really fine strokes. And I'm just varying what I'm doing. I'm not thinking too hard. I am thinking a bit, but not too hard. Um, and trying to sort of just let the flicks and the marker strokes sort of happen. Um, and kind of adding them in varying areas rather than trying to work in one particular section and then another. Um, just kind of naturally trying to flick and, and build up variation and extend some of the lines that I created previously. Um, and then in a minute, I'm going to work back with my C1 and my C0 um, to soften some of the lines and to fill in some of that white space. As with the previous approach and with the next one, it's the working in layers that is really the key to this. Um, you're not going to achieve the look straight away and it is going to look weird at certain points and a bit harsh but as you use your markers and you layer and use the lighter shades they will start to soften your lines and create more texture um, that will help with that natural look so it's a case of working backwards and forwards until you're happy with it and not trying to lay down too much colour to start with. You want to build it up in layers and that will give you that sort of natural hairy look that you're going for. And this applies really um, whether you're colouring a gnome beard or you're colouring a dog or you're colouring hair in general. Um, working in layers with fine strokes is really going to help you to create the texture and also not worrying too much about being precise. And if a line goes wonky, well, 
hair isn't perfect. It isn't all completely uniform. Um, so our colouring doesn't need to be. And having some weird wonky lines might actually help to make it look more interesting and natural. But you can always go over them and soften them and kind of cover them up a little bit. Um, this next t approach that I'm going to show you um, is probably a little bit easier than the last one. Um, requires less thought. And this is just basically creating a natural textured look by building up those marker strokes all over the beard, not creating any specific defined sections. Um, and this is probably my favorite, I think. This is the approach I use most often because the defined approach is fun, but sometimes I feel like I can maybe get a little bit stiff with it and it can end up looking a little bit too um, defined and a little bit too planned. Um, with this technique, you can kind of go with the flow and sort of get into it and slowly build up that texture without worrying too much. Because as you can see, I get a line that goes a little bit wonky. My hand trembles or sort of I just, you know, don't hit the paper quite right. Um, but that's OK, because I'm going to build over that. The C1 is going to um, soften out the lines that I've just created with the C3. And then I'm going to come back in probably with some C4 in a minute and then some C3. And I'm going to go over the whole thing. Um, again, leaving lots of white space to start with is important because you are going to go over that with the lighter colours to create variation in the colour to make it look like you've got lighter and darker hairs kind of lying over each other. Some hairs are in shadow. Um, and again, this is, approach, this is an approach that works well for things like grass. So any sort of texture like this um, where you want to create lighter and darker overlapping lines. Um, just basically don't think about it too much. And I don't think I can, I don't think I can emphasize that enough. Don't think too hard about it. Um, just start putting some marks down on the paper. Um, and again, this is where practicing making marker strokes on a scrap piece of paper is really going to help you. Um, I don't like to make the lines straight up and straight down. I like to follow the shape of the beard. These are big, rounded, bushy beards. So if you make your lines curve, um, it is going to look more rounded and work with the image. You could try using straight lines. I don't personally think it works quite as well. It doesn't look quite as natural, but it is, it is a look. Um, and yet being sparing with the darkest and using that for the deep shadow areas and just for a few strokes here and there throughout and then working back through this C3 again um, is helping to extend some of those uh, C4 lines and just popping them in areas um, here and there helps to create the look of, of sections of hair falling um, across each other. So you don't need to create the defined look, although it can be fun, but I think this one works just as well. I've used um, greys for all of the beards in today's video, but you can use this, um, all of these approaches, whatever colors you're using. Um, so have a go. Um, and let me know what you think. Let me know uh, which is your favourite. Um, and that's it from me for now. I hope you found this useful and I will be back on Wednesday with a coloured pencil version of this video.